When we see kids growing up on screen becoming Hollywood sweethearts, we usually see them as lucky people who live a good life and wouldn't do any harm. So we don't expect to see them in news like this. The day after he murdered his mother, he loaded his car with three guns, ammunition, 12 Molotov cocktails, and a map to Rideau Coll uh, Cottage, I should say, which is where the Prime Minister and his family are currently living in Ottawa. This is Ryan Grantham. He was once known as the star of Diary of a Wimpy Kid and the Riverdale actor. Now, he's a convicted murderer. Why did Ryan murder his own mother in cold blood? Was it a long time coming or did something in his mind switch? And why was he planning on killing the Canadian Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau? Few things make sense in this case. It was a shocking twist to the story of a young actor and several more twists followed after his arrest. Without further ado, let's dive into the case of the Riverdale actor who shot his mom and filmed a creepy video with her body. Hi, I'm Ryan Grantham and uh, I'm playing the role of Redwood. Ryan Grantham had his road paved to stardom from the get-go. He was born in British Columbia, Canada in 1998. He grew up with his mother, Barbara Wadey, in the small town of Squamish, an hour's drive from Vancouver. Squamish is home to just under 20,000, and it calls itself the outdoor recreation capital of Canada. Indeed, you could do any outdoor activity here, from mountain biking to hiking, skiing, and kite surfing. It sounds like a place that encourages good mental health, right? All signs point to Ryan living a good life. But of course, no life is perfect. Perhaps Ryan's first trauma was his dad abandoning the family when he was still a toddler. In fact, he left right after Ryan's little sister, Lisa, was born. Apart from this, not much is known about Ryan's early years. Except, of course, that he started acting very early. He got his first bit in a movie when he was six, and then made his official debut at the age of nine in The Secret of the Nutcracker. And in 2010, he made big bucks after he starred as Rodney James in Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Ryan was only 12 when the movie came out, but he was already very good at talking about life and acting. Just listen to Ryan talking about his character, Redwood. He tries everything to get his parents back together. I think determination is one of the biggest things a person can have, and I think because of Redwood, I've definitely grown in determination, so that's definitely going to stick with me. There are a lot of kids who have had these kind of parent troubles, and it's obviously something that the people need to see. That's a very mature statement for a kid, right? But interestingly, he mentions parent troubles at home. Did Ryan build his character around his own family issues? What were his family issues back then, apart from the divorce he experienced as a young kid? Or was becoming famous as a child stressful enough for him? From the outside, it looked like Ryan's mother did all she could to support her son. She was always with him at auditions or during filming, and she helped him with the ins and the outs of talking to big Hollywood execs. It's unclear whether she was ever controlling or pushy regarding his career, or if acting was his dream and his dream only. Ryan went on to star in even bigger films, like The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, and he even made guest appearances in Supernatural, iZombie, and Riverdale. He told the police he did it to protect me, but it wasn't him, okay? It, it was me. Although a short role, Ryan's character was very impactful to the series plot. His character kills Archie's father in a hit and run and makes a dramatic confession to it. But like the series itself, Ryan's character earned a lot of mixed reviews and a fair amount of online trolling. That was in 2019. That next year, Ryan played in the crime drama Undercover Cheerleader another underwhelming film in terms of the box office. This would be Ryan's last movie. In early 2020, the whole world seemed to come to a halt. The COVID-19 pandemic struck every corner of the world and shut entire business industries, including the Canadian film industry. Ryan was now stuck at home with Barbara, out of work and without a light at the end of the tunnel. No one knew when the pandemic would end, some people were hopeful and made the most of their free time at home, but this wasn't the case with Ryan. Ryan had been struggling with depression for the past few months, so when the pandemic hit, his mental health plummeted like never before. In March 2020, 
Ryan would smoke huge amounts of grass every single day. He'd also stay in his room and film himself with his GoPro camera, rehearsing some really odd videos. There was something else he would rehearse and write in his journal about. He would load and unload his 22 caliber rifle over and over again. Then he would creep up behind his mother while she was focusing on different activities. He would wait there and see if she would notice him. Sadly, she didn't. On the last day of March, Ryan grabbed his gun, loaded it, and went downstairs into the living room where Barbara was playing the piano. First, he stood at the bottom of the stairs and watched his mother play the piano for 15 minutes. Then he walked over to her. He lifted the gun and pressed it to the back of her head. Then he pulled the trigger. She was 64 years old. Not once did she perceive her son as a threat. From her point of view, she and Ryan were best buddies. Ryan had a different point of view. As he saw his mother quickly bleed out on the floor, he picked up his GoPro camera and recorded a confession. He even filmed himself next to his mother's body for four minutes. The video was never made public, but it was revealed in court. In the video, he said, I shot her in the back of the head. In the moments after, she would have known it was me. Then he wrote in his journal, I'm so sorry, mom. I'm so sorry, Lisa. I hate myself. There's a lot of media of me out there, film and TV, hundreds of hours of me that can be viewed and dissected. No one will understand me. Indeed, Ryan didn't hate his mother. He hated himself. In his mind, killing his mom was the only way he could spare her from his dark future. Because Ryan was planning to have a very dark future. For the past months, he'd been having violent, murderous thoughts. He wanted to commit a massacre at his former high school, and he wanted to kill the Canadian Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. He'd also interrupted his studies at Simon Fraser University, but he hadn't told Barbara about it. He was afraid of her disappointment. On March 5th, 2020, Ryan sat in his car outside his university with his rifle in his lap. He planned a horrific attack, then called it off at the last minute. He wanted to plan it better. That's right. Ryan wanted to be a mass murderer, taking dozens of lives, then taking his own in a dramatic shootout with the police, not giving them the satisfaction of an arrest. Ryan's murderous day on March 31st was not the end of his shocking mental decline. After shooting his mother in the head, Ryan simply left his home and drove to town. There, he purchased beer and and got some cash from an ATM machine. When he returned home, he covered Barbara's body with a white sheet, and then he proceeded to watch Netflix for close to three hours. That same night, he made 12 Molotov cocktails. When he woke up the next day, he hung a rosary from the piano and lit several candles around his mother's body. It was unclear whether this was his way of paying his respects, saying goodbye, or ensuring his creepy plan the following day would succeed. By now, Ryan's actions didn't make a lot of sense. After lighting the candles, he prepared his car for the trip, but not in the way you would think. The day after he murdered his mother, he loaded his car with three guns, ammunition, 12 Molotov cocktails, and a map to Rideau Coll uh, Cottage, I should say, which is where the Prime Minister and his family are currently living in Ottawa. For some reason, Ryan was already under the impression that he was super famous. Just look at his diary entry, where he mentions how no one understands him, even with hundreds of hours of footage. Ryan may have been a child actor and a relatively well-known star in North America, but it wasn't like he was super famous. He wasn't making any headlines or best actor lists. Still, he disagreed with his fame and he wanted to be known for something else, something that he thought was more fitting to his actual personality. So he figured if he killed the Canadian prime minister, he would certainly make the headlines. He'd been writing in his journal about it for the last month, but now it was time to set his plan in motion. He left his home and his mother's body and started driving towards Ottawa. On the road, he stopped at a remote area and tested one of his Motlatov cocktails. After driving for another two and a half hours, he stopped in the town of Hope. Ryan considered his possible attacks on the way to Ottawa, Simon Fraser University or Lionsgate Bridge in Vancouver. He couldn't decide. And that's when something happened inside his mind. Ryan decided to drive back to Vancouver and hand himself over to the police. 
Ryan walked over to a policeman who was stationed inside a car in front of the police station. He just told him, I killed my mother. Just around this time, Ryan's sister Lisa came to her house, worried about her complete radio silence. That's when she walked in and found her mother's body lying in a pool of blood and surrounded by creepy burning candles. They'd already melted into the floor, some merging with Barbara's dried blood. Lisa shrieked and fell to the floor. She knew it was her brother, but she didn't want to believe it. However, when she called the police, her worst fears were confirmed to be true. Ryan was already in custody, charged with first-degree murder. Strangely, Ryan did not attempt to hide any aspect of his murderous plan. As soon as he was sat down by the police officers in the interrogation room, Ryan told them all about the past few months. His mental health issues, his self-loathing, his homicidal thoughts, his plan to go on a killing spree. He even showed them his journals and GoPro videos, which he had taken with him in his car. The officers were struggling to put two and two together. This was the Riverdale kid, right? It made no sense. Well, nothing made sense if you only look at it from far away. We don't know anything about people behind the actors, do we? So after Ryan's arrest, a myriad of clinical psychologists spoke to him. They were trying to understand his motivation in killing his mother and in pursuing horrific, murderous rampage afterward. Also, what made him change his mind? He was all packed and ready to go. What appears to have happened is uh, Ryan Grantham experiencing a, sort of a downward spi spiral of mental health and depression, self-loathing, and homicidal thoughts. Sure, his mental health declined rapidly after the COVID-19 pandemic hit and caused lockdowns in so many countries. But a lot of people suffered mental health declines at the time. Still, they didn't kill their mothers, nor did they plan a murderous spree. So what made Ryan decide to take his mother's life? During a hearing in June 2022, Ryan said the following. I cannot explain or justify my actions. I have no excuse. It hurts me to think about how badly I've wasted my life. In the face of something so horrible, saying sorry seems so pointless. But from every fiber of my being, I'm sorry. This was over two years after the murder. According to his defense team, Ryan really did improve his mental health, and he understood the true horror of what he'd done. He's extremely remorseful for his actions, and um, he's doing everything he possibly can to make amends for them. But did you notice how he said he was sorry he wasted his life? This is a pretty big clue into his motive. Ryan was a selfish person. Even when talking about killing his mother, he felt remorseful for having to spend a good part of his life in prison. And when he killed his mom, in his head, he did it to spare her from his violent actions in his plans to go on a murderous rampage. How is killing someone sparing them? This just goes to show how selfish he was. When psychologists analyzed Ryan's personality before his trial, they determined that he was suffering from depression and anxiety, and he had very unstable and fragile behavior. He constantly experienced mood swings, and he seemed to be very vulnerable. He was also convinced he was a failure. And somehow, he fueled this belief through his behavior over the last year or so. He was smoking more and more weed, and he became obsessed with violent videos on the dark web. He had become engulfed in a dark world of his own making, and he had no way out of it. But strangely, none of the clinicians who saw Ryan in prison diagnosed him with psychosis. This means that he didn't have a psychotic episode when he killed his mother. He was just in a very bad state of mind. According to psychiatrist Dr. Todd Grande, shame is what lies at the center of Ryan's motive. You see, Ryan was going through a harsh episode of depression. Because he overindulged on weed and watched violent content online, he only fell deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole. That's when he started feeling more and more judged by other people. He suffered when he got bad reviews for his movie and TV characters and felt like no one understood him. He mistook his characters or even acting skills for the whole person that he was. He associated one tiny failure with his failure as a human being. So he started fantasizing about going on a killing spree so that other people could feel the pain he was feeling. This is so unfair. It's really not how you treat depression or dark fantasies. 
but sadly many young people who commit school massacres have this mindset. Ryan thus started planning his murderous rampage, but Barbara was standing in the way. He was already feeling shame toward her because he'd interrupted his university studies and feared her disappointment. Imagine her disappointment if her son became a serial killer. He desperately wanted to murder people, but he wanted to commit shame-free homicide. His mother was just a hurdle on the way to murderous glory. So he killed his mom and removed the shame from his actions. Now he was free to commit all the atrocities he wanted, as if his mother would be the only one judging such actions. In an interesting turn of events, it was also shame that made Ryan change his mind and hand himself over to the police. Remember he left his home prepared for a massacre and he'd even practiced throwing a Motlov cocktail in an empty area? But as the hours passed and he was getting closer to Ottawa, feelings of shame crept into his mind again. He was just a terrible person. Now he also felt shame for taking his mother's life. What kind of son is he? Perhaps for one minute he realized the trauma he inflicted on his sister and everyone who loved him and Barbara. However, this wasn't the main reason he turned himself over. He figured if he confessed to the murder and showed remorse, he would probably get a low enough sentence to get out of jail while he's still fairly young. So again, he proved he was quite selfish. Luckily, this also ended up saving a lot of lives, if you can call it saving. Those lives weren't his to take in the first place. Of course, Ryan Grantham did make the headlines this time. Law enforcement officials in Vancouver explained to Deadline that Grantham has been in custody since 2020, with sources adding that he's been participating in mental health programs since his arrest. A former BC actor who shot and killed his own mother has been sentenced to life in prison. Ryan's trial began on June 13th, 2022. During his trial, his GoPro videos played and his journal was read in front of the jury. His intentions were very clear. But Ryan's defense lawyer convinced the jury Ryan did not premeditate killing his mother. He only took her life because of his temporary mental illness, the severe depression he was going through. However, this is strange. Ryan had practiced killing his mom for days before the murder, and he'd even written about it in his diary. At the time of this offense, this killing was not done out of hatred or animosity. It was done in Mr. Grantham's disordered thinking to prevent his mother from seeing what he thought he was about to do. Yeah, that's not kindness though. In September, 2022, Ryan Grantham was found guilty of second degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. However, he is eligible for parole in 14 years. 17 years is usually the time given for second degree murder, but his defense team pleaded for 12 and received 14. A BC Supreme Court judge called this case disturbing, heartbreaking, and extremely tragic. She says she wanted to strike a balance by recognizing the gravity of this crime without extinguishing any hope of rehabilitation. Ryan Grantham was given a life sentence with no chance of parole for 14 years. Luckily, Ryan's TV fame didn't amount to anything here. He got a serious prison sentence, enough to make him think about his past actions and change his behavior going forward. Apparently, he's already working hard to improve his mental health ever since his 2020 arrest. He's done everything he could do in prison. Uh, he's taken every possible course. He's attended counseling as much as he possibly could. I think there's good hope to believe that he could be rehabilitated. But Judge Kathleen Kerr reminded Ryan this won't be an easy journey. I won't sugarcoat it. This is going to be hard. As you go forward, continue on your path of treatment. Remain true to the commitment you told me about bettering yourself. Ryan wasn't convicted for plotting to kill Justin Trudeau. If he receives parole in 14 years, he will be 38 years old when he gets out. He will still have a lifetime ahead to make amends for his actions. But can you ever make amends for killing your own mom? This is a sad case and a reminder of the dangers of shame. Ryan Grantham wasn't psychotic, and he was able to tell right from wrong, but his perception of himself was pretty warped. He hated his TV fame as he thought people misunderstood him. But that's the point. When you're an actor, you play characters, not yourself. You're meant to be misunderstood. Then he felt shame for his thoughts and became obsessed with removing his mom from the picture to stop feeling shame. Instead of stopping his murderous plans, 
he stopped his mother's life. So in Ryan's case, it was shame filtered through a very selfish perspective. Someone who sees murdering their mother as altruistic, sparing the person's disappointment, is seriously disturbed and cold-blooded. According to Dr. Todd Grande, Ryan is a vulnerable narcissist, insecure, pessimistic, very sensitive, and vindictive. This is what allowed him to hide his true intentions from his mother for so long. He held his worst thoughts and feelings hidden, all while appearing normal on the outside, even to his closest relatives. It takes a bad kind of narcissist to want to kill other people instead of seeking treatment for your depression. Taking the joy from other people should not bring you joy. Hopefully Ryan will receive good treatment in prison and not continue to hide his narcissism and manipulate his psychologist too. Thanks for watching you guys. Hey, don't be shy. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. See you next time and don't forget to keep yourself safe.